In making his argument against qualia, Dennett proposes several intuition pumps, and uh, these are ways, you know, the kind of thought experiments that vividly get you to think about your qualitative experience in various different ways. Uh, the intuition pumps pump in several different ways. Sometimes they pump you towards uh, intuitions about qualia and sometimes they pump you away from intuitions about qualia, so be paying attention to how they work. It can get a little confusing to try to figure out what Dennett's arguing um, as he's pumping you back and forth, uh, but pay attention to these different pumps and, and how you're being pumped and whether uh, the pumps make you more or less inclined to be a materialist uh, about um, about color um, and, and to be more or less inclined to quine qualia. The first intuition pump is watching you eat cauliflower. Um, I cannot imagine liking the taste of eating cauliflower, so it must taste different to you than to me. You have different qualia than I do when you eat cauliflower. And this is a reasonable hypothesis, Dennett thinks, if you compare that to, for example, drinking orange juice in relation to eating pancakes or drinking coffee, um, that that's going to change how orange juice tastes to you, um, depending on what other things that you have tasted. And, you know, and this, again, is more like qualitative character in terms of taste being dependent on relations to different things and how your taste buds are are being manipulated. Um, it pumps in the direction of qualia when you just think about how cauliflower tastes to you and you see someone else um, eating cauliflower and liking it and you think, ah, oh, that's horrible. And so you posit that there's some thing, some extra irreducible taste qualia that the other person is having with cauliflower that you have something entirely different. Um, and that is the, the, the intuition pump, this kind of comparison in, in um, liking or disliking some flavor that suggests that you have entirely different uh, qualia. There's something different in your experience that is um, uh, not reducible to these relations or to something that's going on in your taste buds. So think about you know that sort of intuition pump and how and how it's pumping you uh, towards qualia or away from qualia. The second uh, intuition pump is about the wine tasting machine. And here a computer could be built to evaluate wine with as much subtlety as a human, but it can never have the qualia of tasting wine. Uh, and later in the semester, we'll talk about conscious machines and taste is one of the uh, examples uh, that's brought up as something that a machine may or may not ever be able to have. Uh, and so, you know, as we're going through different theories of consciousness, you know, think about whether, um, you know, a machine could have that ability um, and whether that ability would uh, be sufficient to be the taste itself. Um, Dennett's an eliminativist, and so he's going to say if you had a machine that could taste wine and evaluate wine with the same uh, capacity as a human, then that's all there is to uh, being conscious and to enjoying wine. Um, and so, you know, kind of be thinking for yourself if you think that's the case. So think again about the properties of qualia, the four properties. Do you have to have those four properties with the machine have to have uh, those four properties. Could you build a machine that has those four properties um, in order to have uh, the experience of tasting wine, the maybe the enjoyment of tasting wine, in addition to the capacity to evaluate the taste of wine? Uh, notice with those four properties in this section where Dennett talks about the wine tasting machine, he, um, he uh, lists those four properties. He actually lists a different property than the one that um, I've listed as irreducible. Um, and he puts that fourth, he, he puts the other, th um, he puts intrinsic third. Um, and instead of irreducible as, uh, as 
that extra property. He talks about um, uh, the quality of of qualia the, as as being directly or immediately apprehensible in consciousness. So um, I've talked about you know, irreducibility, and uh, and he talks about being immediately uh, before the mind and consciousness. And the argument to connect that immediacy with irreducibility is basically Descartes' argument for dualism, because these qualities, your consciousness is before the mind, um, it's immediately accessible to you, you can't doubt it, and you can doubt all of the physical properties, then they must be distinct. So if there's consciousness that's immediately before your mind, if these qualities are right here and they're not somehow in the physical objects themselves, then, uh, then it looks like um, they can't be explained in terms of anything physical. Uh, so that's the, the, the relationship. Um, and I've substituted irreducibility because it makes it much clearer uh, that qualia are incompatible with materialism. And, and uh, you know, the argument about directly being directly before the mind is, um, is that, that particular property is a little harder to grasp, I think. Um, but that's the argument, is that it's, these are connected in this sort of way, and that's the legacy from Descartes. The next intuition pump is one of the favorites of anyone who thinks about uh, color experience, the inverted spectrum. And that's where two people could exhibit all the same behavior but have different color experience. So we both look at the pink square, we both say that it's pink, um, we both, you know, sort things, you know, pink things in relation to other pink things and red things and, and so forth. Um, but in fact, um, uh, what's a pink experience for me is a green experience for you, and so um, our color experiences are inverted. And this um, uh, intuition pump obviously pumps in favor of qualia. It seems like there's nothing that could distinguish between, you know, what my experience is and what your experience is that could tell us uh, what the difference is. It seems like all of the physical and functional and verbal reports would all um, make it possible to have this inverted experience. The next intuition pump, the brainstorm machine, has been proposed as an intuition pump to subvert the inverted spectrum. Uh, and that's an apparatus that allows one person to see the color experience someone else was having. So if we could invent a machine that we could put on my head, then you could look in my machine and I say I'm seeing pink and you would look in and you would be like, oh no, she's not seeing pink, she's actually seeing green. And if we could invent this brainstorm machine, it looks like um, we would have physical and functional evidence of that would disprove the inverted spectrum, that there, we could see what was going on in terms of the difference uh, between um, you know, your experience and my experience. But Dennett isn't happy with the brainstorm machine as, uh, as a, an intuition pump to, to subvert the inverted spectrum because he wants to say, you know, look, how are we going to know if the brainstorm machine is working or not. So say we tweak the cables a little bit on the brainstorm machine and then, uh, you know, you really are seeing the same colors. You're both seeing pink. Um, how do we know that um, the machine is, is giving the correct readout of your experience? Well, the only way to know that the machine is working properly is by your report. So we, you know, we design the, the machine, you say you're seeing pink, and so we, you know, set up the machine so that you're seeing pink. The only way that the brainstorm machine can work is, is through this, um, you know, subjective report. So we can't get a brainstorm machine that can be perfectly objective about another person's experience. And this is actually a 
bigger problem in contemporary neuroscience research than most neuroscientists really accept or recognize uh, that, um, you know, the machines are set up and calibrated based on subjective reports. So if you're, you're looking at an fMRI and um, you're picking out the brain region that is um, coded for seeing faces or seeing objects, then uh, you're doing that because the person is reporting that they're seeing faces and they're seeing objects. This is not an unreasonable hypothesis, but it's something that we need to keep in mind so that um, we recognize that there has to be this calibration in advance, that an fMRI isn't just a, a mind-reading machine. It has to be calibrated before it can read the mind, and the mind is known by virtue of subjective report. This is a, a particular issue in contemporary consciousness research as well in, uh, in thinking about um, sorting out what is going on in the brain when you're conscious of something as opposed to what's going on in the brain when you're reporting your consciousness of something. That um, since most uh, of these experiments rely on the subject saying, I was conscious of that or I was not conscious of that, then it seems like uh, the, the, the two, the consciousness and the reporting, are conflated in terms of the brain signals that you're getting. So there's been an effort to develop what's known as no report paradigms for measuring conscious experience that don't involve people reporting on their experience. Uh, so keeping in mind how we know about what's going on in the mind when we're developing these brainstorm machines that we're now developing uh, is an important aspect of neuroscience research that we need to keep in mind.